<laughs> Hi and um, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the Nuke. This video is going to be a super niche video, I don't know whether any of you want to watch this video, but um, someone gave a comment on one of my videos asking me to talk more about the public libraries in Singapore and I thought I should. Um, public libraries in Singapore are a great thing, there's just so many of them and the good thing about them is that they're pretty much spread across the country so there's bound to be one that's near you if you live in any of the neighbourhoods. The public libraries in Singapore are under the public sector in Singapore means that they are actually run by a statutory board which is affiliated with the government and the public sector. This means that the library will always have consistent funds in order to renovate the place and to have a pretty robust collection. Uh, but at the same time, because it's also under the government, there are certain rules that libraries have to play by, uh, which you don't see as much in private libraries, you don't see as much in independent libraries, but that's for another day altogether. Today we'll be talking about the public libraries, which falls under the National Library Board in Singapore. In case you didn't know, the National Library and the Public Library are different things in Singapore. So a lot of people don't know this, but public libraries function more as kind of civic centres for people to gather, but also kind of like for a wide demographic of people, of users. Um, I would call them more family friendly. So, and the National Library on the other hand is the National Collection, so you're going to see a lot of rare books. You're also going to see a lot more controversial books in the National Collection that you won't be able to borrow and bring out of the National Library. So do take note of that if you are someone living in Singapore and you want to find books in Singapore, you can find some pretty interesting books in the National Library but you cannot bring them out or you might have limited access so you might only be able to browse them uh, in certain time frames. I don't know too specifically about that. So about my own reading habits, I get a lot of my books from the library. I would say half of them or even up to like 80% of my books are from the library. A lot of my books, I don't really own them. <laughs> Public libraries in Singapore do have a pretty robust online catalogue as well that you can access through the app Libby. So if you're interested in that, I sound like I'm being sponsored by them, but I am not. I am just a huge avid user of the library, as we all should be. I would say generally, there are certain caveats that like you won't be able to get all your books from the library, obviously, because in Singapore, certain titles and certain ideas are not to be discussed publicly. So if you're looking for books that are on like queer communities or looking for somewhat like more controversial books, you probably won't find them in the library and you probably have to source them for yourself in other ways. So I would say I get about like 70% of my books from the library. The other 30% just do not exist in the library. Uh, which is unfortunate, but that's kind of how I have to grapple with um, my resources right now in Singapore. The reason why I want to rank them today is because they all have different functions. They range from regional libraries that are kind of all in one centers, but there are also a lot of random neighborhood libraries that are hidden gems here and there, which I want to highlight to everyone. So I have three main criteria in ranking my libraries. The first one is the kind of general vibe of it. Uh, whether it's a nice library, I think that's very that's very subjective, but according to me, um, I'm going to explain what I mean by nice with each library. The second is the collection, so um, if the collection is robust, if it's updated, um, if there is special collections in the library, that's also kind of unique to me. The third is how good the space is for studying because I know a lot of you use the library for this or you use it for like co-working or anything just a space outside of home to work at um, that is the third factor so studyability which is unfortunate because most people only use the library ever to study but um, hopefully you'll see that there are a lot of other libraries that have great functions in Singapore so let's go on to the first one as you can tell I've actually put all the different libraries in pictures over here and they're by alphabetical order so the first one that we have here is Amokyo library I've never been there I don't have much opinion about it you can actually browse about the library here so the Amokyo library it's not particularly old and as you can tell it's not particularly interesting it looks pretty normal to me so because of that we're gonna give it a c grade the next one is the Badok public library and you know this library was pretty recently renovated i think a couple of years back and uh if you know me in real life you would know that i have a particular uh, affiliation with this library but uh, i'm gonna rank it as a b because it has uh, a specific 
collection. Uh, that is the Malay collection. So there are different uh, libraries that are based upon the dif different ethnic identities in Singapore. So the Baroque Public Library has a pretty good Malay collection. Uh, so you're gonna you're gonna be able to find quite a good Baha Bahasa collection in this library. I've seen quite a few Bahasa speakers finding books in this library, uh, which is pretty interesting. The studying space is not a lot of studying space, but the space is pretty nice. It's very new uh, and there's a lot of sitting area to kind of browse and enjoy so i'll rank this about like a b i've never been to the Bichon library uh let's go and check it out it looks a bit retro uh, i don't think it's freshly renovated but it seems to have a pretty good spot for studying and it looks like it's a well-used library uh, i don't know about now uh, but because we're also talking about studyability i'm gonna put it at a b the next one here is Bukit Panjang Library, which I have not been to, uh, unfortunately. Bukit Panjang Library, uh, it looks very cute, it looks very fresh, it looks very new. Look at the kids. Um, yeah, this looks great. I guess it's more family-centric. Well, Bukit Panjang is a place where there are a lot of young families, but it looks pretty standard to me, so I'm going to put it at uh, maybe a C. Yeah, next is the Bukit Batok Public Library. So it is something that looks a bit more old school, I guess. Yeah, so I'm gonna be putting it at AC. Please don't be offended or don't feel that it's a bad thing for your library to be in the C rank. The next library we have is the CCK Library, the Chuan Library. And look how cute that is. Look how amazingly cute this library is. Again, like I mentioned, a lot of these libraries are designed to be more family-centric. So again, you're going to see a lot of design elements that are much more catered towards younger readers, encouraging young families to come and check out the library. This is very cute. I actually have been to the Chachukong Library, and it's a library that has a bit more of an eco theme to it. It has a lot of sustainability, sustainability themes. It was very freshly renovated, opened just a couple months ago from the time of recording. Uh, so because of that, I think I will give it a, I'll give it a B tier, because even though I was there, the collection wasn't great. Uh, the collection was pretty general. It didn't have any particular unique points. Uh, I thought there would be a lot more environmental books, but the collection was pretty much the same as every other library that I've been to. Uh, but because of its exhibitions, and you can tell that and in, within the library there are a lot of educational materials for younger readers. There was even an artist collaboration that did like a recycling sculpture in the library itself. So that was pretty cool. And because of that, maybe I'll put it maybe I'll put it to A tier. I feel like I've been pretty strict with the library. The next one is the Cheng San Library, and um, I've never been there, so I I don't know whether I can even make judgments on all these libraries that I've never been to, honestly. Um but look at this library. It looks... This is so cute. Look at that. Oh, okay. This is a tiny one. Oh, wow. I see there's a bit of a red theme going on here. And if you see, right, this is a newspaper reading corner. And the reason why so many libraries in Singapore uh, focus on the newspaper reading section is because there is a lot of elderly that come to the libraries to read the newspapers and to spend time there. So. Uh, there's a lot of these newspaper reading corners in all of the public libraries, which I think is very cool because you get to come in and read the uh, the newspapers in any language that you want to. Here you still see physical formats, but nowadays libraries are moving towards digital formats. Uh, because of this very cute red theme, I will give it maybe a B tier. It looks cute. I like that. Okay, the next library that we have here is the library at Chinatown. So this library is one of those particular libraries. If you see a library at something, um, that usually means it's a bit more of a special library. This one is the only library that is run mostly by volunteers and not by the library staff themselves. And this library has a strong focus on like Chinese culture and Chinese literature. If you're someone that's interested in finding more Chinese language books, or Chinese culture specific stuff, you're gonna find it all in this library. Now the library itself looks really old. The library itself can do with a bit of renovating and it's also in the corner of the mall. So it's really in a very obscure corner of the mall. It's not very accessible. Um, design elements are seating Positions are also not that great. It's not really a place where you can study, but because of the collection, I will give it um, 
a, a B tier because it does have a lot of very unique collections, a lot of art books, a lot of culture books, and a lot of academia that is relating to Chinese culture, not just like in Singapore, but in the region and also globally. So I found a lot of interesting books about Chinese identity in this book, uh, in this library, which I think some of you might be interested in. Clementi Library, I would say, I am a bit biased towards because it's not great looking, but it is the library that I visit pretty often to return my books. Uh, but it is a very, very standard library. It doesn't have a lot of seating areas and the collection is kind of small. Put it as a C tier. The next library we have here is the library at Esplanade. It is the first public library dedicated to performing arts and because it is obviously based in the Esplanade, if you don't know what it is, it is a performing arts center in Singapore and it looks like a giant durian. That's what people call it. This is the only library that I think that has a really, really robust video collection. So performing arts video collections. The thing is that they also have studios, like they actually have um, studios where you can practice and they do have a piano. This is the dance section and I visited this shelf so much when I was doing my um, senior thesis on dance in Singapore. So because of that, this library does have a bit of a special place in my heart because it is literally like the only library where you can find so much information on performing arts and also specifically specifically about arts and culture in Singapore. So because of that, I will put it at an A tier because I think people should visit this library. Geelong East Public Library. It's not like super freshly renovated, but I would say the collection is not too bad. There's some pretty outdated collections here. I don't think the collection is super updated in this one. Uh, but it's a very nice place to chill out, especially if, in your, if you're in the area and you want to have a good like three hours just reading a book. I think this would be a nice library to spend your time in. So because of that, I would put it at a B rank. Uh, I don't know why it's library at Harbourfront because I don't think there's anything special about this collection. You can sit here and watch like that is Sentosa over there. That's literally Sentosa from the, you can see Sentosa from the library. And there's so many seats that are facing outwards. Um, the collection, I don't think it's anything special. But because of the view, and I do think it's a very nice place to spend your time if you're in the area because it is in the, it's in the mall, Vivo City Mall. Uh, and because of that, I would put, I would put it at an A tier because I do think if you're reading a book, uh, you can definitely get one of those seats there, Jurong Regional Library. But visit this area specifically because it has such a huge collection. It's multiple levels high, and so you're gonna see a lot of books. Uh, if you're someone that needs to get all your books in order in just one day, uh, visiting by the regional libraries might be a good idea. This will be a great place to study because there's just so many seats available for you uh, and the great thing about this library is that it has a pretty good Singapore collection so I'll put it at maybe maybe a C tier that's it it's a C tier for me next is the Jurong West library it's pretty standard there's nothing much about it so because of that I put it at a C rank so the Central Public Library is actually the library that's under the National Library and it's I don't know it, I guess it's a bit more of a historic site like a more heritage site and look at this kids section this kid section is amazing. I don't know how they did it. I would say studying wise is pretty standard. There's not as much seating but because we're also talking about the National Library, uh, the National Library itself is like multiple levels, like 14 levels if I'm not wrong or more than that like 20 levels and there are various levels that you can go up to and sit in and read and study for as long as you like. So because of that, it is the most studyable place in Singapore. So many people have queued up in from the National Library just to get a seat so they can study the whole day. So in terms of that, it is very high on that list and because it's in the city centre, it's very convenient to go grab lunch while you're in between studying. Uh, and generally, I love the collection here. You get a lot of non-fiction here, like a lot of great non-fiction titles are in this central public library. And so because of that, I would put it as an A tier. But maybe because of the national collection in the national library, I might put it as an S tier. So I would actually recommend everyone to go and visit the national libraries, but not just to study, but to check out the shelves. You should really go up to the different levels and check out the different shelves because it's unlikely that you'll find any of these books anywhere else and because of that, I put it in the S tier. It's the Marine Parade Library. Look at that, it's so cute. 
Uh, the facade of the library is really cute. Um, and you know, that kind of made me a bit biased, honestly. I would say it still has a bit of that outdated vibe and I couldn't find a lot of books that I liked but very strangely enough this library has a lot of very interesting titles that you might not see in other public libraries. Because of that and because of how cute the building is, it's a very old building but architecturally I really enjoy the building um, and because of that I would put it as a B tier. <laughs> the next library that I have here is the Orchard Library. Uh, this one is like the most famous library in Singapore. This is the most photogenic library um, and so many stock photos of this library are available online. Like literally when I search out libraries, there's always going to be a stock photo of this particular library. So um, if you're very into aesthetics, you might enjoy this library. But honestly, these shelves are so hard to browse. Like you just cannot find the books that you want to find in this library. And this library is very much centered on design. If you're someone that's like more interested in design, so you're just interested in maybe graphic design, illustration, fashion, maybe website design, maybe you're interested in architecture, you'll definitely find all of those books in this specific library. You're not going to find a lot of general collection. There's so many great design books I found in this library and it's a great place to research if you're someone that's doing something in the creative field. This is really a great place to find lots of inspiration. So because of that, I would put it as an S tier because I do think it's a great place to visit not just because of the design of the space but also because of the collection. Unfortunately, the seating arrangement, like the sitting capacity is not that great and it gets really busy because it's right in the middle of the city centre. So a lot of people like to browse and go through the library. It's not that easy to find a spot to sit in for the whole day. Because of the collection, how unique it is, I'll put it as an S tier even though it's such a hassle to browse. Like it's so bad to navigate but um, the collection makes up for it so that's that. The Pasir Ris Library, I have never been there so I can't really make a judgement on this place. It seems pretty nice. I mean, look at the sitting area. It looks great. I think I will put it maybe at a B tier. The next one here is the Queenstown Library. And this is a historic library in Singapore. So it's the oldest library in Singapore. And it has a really cute exhibition on the origins and the history of libraries and readership in Singapore. It's not that great for just spending your time sitting. I mean, look at that. It just looks like a classroom. <laughs> But because of its historic significance, uh, I would put it actually as an A tier. I do think it's worth visiting to see how an old library actually looks like because the layout of the library never really changed uh, since it first opened. And it's really nice to see the facade of the library staying as it is. That kind of is how I remembered libraries when I was younger. Uh, because of that, I'll put it as an A tier. And you should visit it before it gets renovated because it is slated for renovation soon. Um, but I do hope it keeps a bit of that historic vibe as it currently does right now. So do check it out if you can, if you're in the area. It's a really cute little space. And I think because it's so secluded, it's really out of nowhere. Okay, again, my camera just malfunctioned on me. But let's try and finish this video in particular. So next here, we have the Sembawang Public Library. Yeah, C tier. It looks, doesn't look very special to me, I guess. If anyone lives in Sengkang and likes to visit this library, let me know what you think about it. A bit of like that nautical theme going on, but because I don't know whether there's anything special about it, it literally it has... houses the Singapore collection as well as the adult English non-fiction and mother tongue language collections. Spend some time exploring our curated displays which are housed in fishing baskets at the sides of our shelves. Wow. Wow, look at that, it has a VR tour. I'll put it maybe at a B tier. The Sinaran Queen Library was pretty standard. It's located in the mall, so it's one of those like neighborhood malls, uh, neighborhood libraries. Pretty standard uh, because of the help there. It's a C. A C is great, by the way, guys. It's not a bad thing. The next is the Tampanis Regional Library, and this I will put it immediately at the S tier because you know what? This library is massive and there's just so many things in the library. They have a literal like 3D printing lab in this library and they have such amazing seating spaces. Like the seating in this library is so good. Like there's just, there's it's just so much natural light and so many areas to sit down and enjoy your books. And there's just like a place for everything. There's like a whole 
level dedicated to young, like to teen readers. And that's a great place for studying. They have so many tables there for you to study the whole day away. And it's located in the Tampanese Hub, our Tampanese Hub. So lots of eating options there, a lot of great spaces to just enjoy and you know, just enjoy your time. You're most likely going to find the most latest books in this library. You can also watch a soccer match because it looks over a soccer field. So that's really funny. And next I have the Tobio Library and it's a very old library. It has a very special place in my heart because this is the library that I used to visit all the time when I was younger. But um, it's a pretty standard library, it's a standalone library again. Uh, it's very rare to find standalone public libraries nowadays because most of them are converted to mall libraries or they're in community centres like the Tampanese one. I'll put it as an A tier because I'm biased like that. This is my ranking. The Woodlands Regional Library, never been there. That area I've never really explored. Look at that. Look at all this children's stuff. I would say it's pretty standard, so I'll put it at a C. <laughs> the last one is the Yishun Library. Oh, I guess it's more of a business. Look at this whole exhibition on upskilling in Korea. Interesting. Wow, this looks really nice. This looks great. I would, wow, I would love this. This looks like a great place to just read your books. Wow, I'll put it in a B tier. The S tier libraries are the Central Public Library and the corresponding National Library, as well as the Orchard Library and the Tampanes Library. I'm not too surprised because those are the libraries I tend to visit a lot uh, when I want to enjoy a library. But generally, if you want to ask me which libraries do I think are worth visiting, um, really do check out Tampanes Library. It is a fantastic library. That is pretty much my recommendation at the end of all this. So anyway, that's it for this video. I hope it was fun. This was a freaking long video to make because there's just so many public libraries. A lot of the older libraries, I think, especially those in the C tier, will probably get renovated in, like sometime soon uh, or they will sort of stay as like neighborhood libraries, more of like a space to pick up books or drop books because the libraries actually do have this function where you can send books to the nearest library uh, for pickup. Uh, so they might, may not be like the most visitable spaces, nor are they the great, the best places to study. Overall, I do think the public libraries in Singapore um, do a great job of keeping books like you know, generally being very accessible to people and they are extremely family friendly. They are super, super great for people, uh, for young readers to encourage them to build up a reading habit from young. So I do think the libraries are very much geared towards that, which is great. I do think that a lot of libraries around the world tend to be a lot more ancient, vintage, like very, very like classic vibes. But libraries in Singapore are very much family centers. So they're very much designed to be friendly, welcoming, and always gonna be in renovation, which is kind of what Singapore stands for in general. Uh, this constant renovation, trying to be family friendly and things like that. But yeah, anyway, so that's it for this video. I hope you learned something new about the libraries today. I really enjoy visiting all these libraries. I think they're super fun. Thanks for joining me in this extremely, extremely niche and memory video. Uh, I really enjoyed it because I'm such a nerd for libraries. I love libraries so much and I'm so happy to have been able to share all these libraries with you. So yeah, do let me know if you've visited any of these libraries or if after hearing about them today, you want to go and visit any of them. Oh, by the way, the reason why I'm not video, I'm not recording any of these videos in the library is because there is a library etiquette not to be filming in the library. So that's why I wasn't filming this in the library and you shouldn't be filming in the library or vlogging in the library because that's not the etiquette so be careful if you want to do that do let me know if you want more ranking videos like this it was extremely fun to make thanks again for joining me and i'll see you in the next one take care i do hope you're staying well if you're not um if the day is not treating you well i do hope you get a good night's rest and that tomorrow will treat you a lot better because you deserve it thanks so much and see you bye